friends we are here once more with another study in the word study of God's word and this evening we have quite an interesting tale in the scripture on which the principle of God being our powerful defender is based on and as is suggested by our theme God is a powerful defender and so to help us appreciate our main text, which is from Isaiah 37, verses 14 to 28, I will be reading Isaiah 36, or parts thereof, and provide a little background as it relates to how we have gotten to Isaiah 37. So here beginneth from Isaiah 36. In the 14th year, of King Hezekiah's reign. Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, attacked all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. Then the king of Assyria sent his field commander, Rabshakeh, with a large army from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. When the commander stopped at the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to the washerman's field, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the recorder, went out to meet him. The field commander, or the Rabsheke, said to them, Tell Hezekiah. Now, this is the beginning of a threat that I'm going to be reading. It says, this is what the great king, the king of Assyria says. On what are you basing this confidence of yours? You say you have strategy and military strength, but you speak only empty words. On whom are you depending that you rebel against me? Look, look now, you are depending on Egypt that splintered reed of a staff which pierces a man's hand and wounds him if he leans on it such is pharaoh king of egypt to all who depend on him and if you say we are depending on the lord our god isn't he the one whose high places and altars hezekiah removed saying to judah and jerusalem you must worship before this altar come now make a bargain with my master the king of assyria i will give you two thousand horses if you can put riders on them how then can you repulse one officer of the least of my master's officials even though you are depending on egypt for chariots and horsemen furthermore have I come to attack and destroy this land without the Lord the Lord himself told me to march against this country and destroy it the threat continues then Eliakim 
Shebna and Joah said to the field commander, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic. Since we understand it, don't speak to us in Hebrew in the hearing of the people on the wall. But the commander replied, Was it only to your master and you that my master sent me to say these things and not to the men sitting on the wall? Who, like you, will have to eat their own filth and drink their own urine? Insulta continue, no. Then the commander stood and called out in Hebrew, Hear the words of the great king the king of Assyria. This is what the king says. Do not let Hezekiah deceive you. He cannot deliver you. Do not let Hezekiah persuade you to trust in the Lord when he says, the Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given into the hand of the king, Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah. This is what the king of Assyria says. Make peace with me and come out to me. Then every one of you will eat from his own vine and fig tree and drink water from his own cistern until I come and take you to a land like your own, a land of grain and new wine and a land of bread and vineyards. These are promises now, you know. Do not let Hezekiah mislead you. When he says, the Lord will deliver us, has the God of any nation ever delivered his land from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Seraphim? Have they rescued Samaria from my hand? Who of all the gods of these countries has been able to save his hand? his land from me. How then can the Lord deliver Jerusalem from my hand? But hear what happened, the last verse that I will read, it says, but the people remained silent and said nothing in reply because the king had commanded, do not answer him.
Let us pray. Loving Lord and Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come, O oh God, thanking you that we have direct access to you. Lord, as we come this evening to look into your word, to be empowered, to be reminded, to be assured and reassured how much of a great defender you are, I pray in the name of Jesus that your people who are under the sound of my voice will be receptive to this, your word, O oh God, and truly believe that you are the great defender. Glorify yourself, now, mighty God, in these few moments that we shall spend exploring the scriptures together. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, let me ask this question. Have you ever been in a difficult situation? A situation where you are threatened or it may be a situation that just seems so impossible that it's almost hopeless and death really seem like a, a, a good option. Hmm? A dire situation, yeah? Well, here we have it, as was read, where the king of Judah, King Hezekiah, was in a pickle. King Hezekiah, you see, was a godly king. And one could say his faith was being put to the test here. As earlier, earlier on, Hezekiah did put great trust in Pharaoh's promise to help Israel against the Assyrians. But we know promises are only as good as the credibility of the person making them. So what had happened was Assyria was now taunting Judah for trusting Pharaoh, for trusting in Egypt, as there were saps, as we would say in our local dialect. And so they sent a threat to the king of Judah, that is to Hezekiah, that not even his God could help him against their planned attack. And he was to just surrender. He was just to roll over into their hands. But Isaiah the prophet had already said that the Assyrians would not destroy Jerusalem. So the people need not be afraid of them. So the people had that word of assurance from the Lord. And would you believe it, brothers and sisters, just as how they had that assurance of the, the word of the Lord, it's the same way. We, you and I, we have the promises of God. We have the assurance of God that he is always with us and he will take up shield and butler and he will fight for us. He will fight against those who fight against us. He will fight our battles for us. Yet Satan will come. He will come in and he will whisper discouragement and other things and try to confuse us or deceive us yeah you see people don't need only to be sinful to be ineffective for god but once one allows doubt to creep in one becomes confused now as to what god really want yeah one become confused as it relates to what God really wants, which is why it is important for us to study his word. It is important for us to study the word so we can be effective, so we can effectively take up that sword and fight effectively in this spiritual battle. All right. So the field commander or the Rabsheke, if you're using the King James, that is what it says. He was so bold that he issued now this threat in the hearing and face of the people of Judah, hoping to demoralize them. As the king of Assyria, Sennacherib, was hoping now to break the people. He was hoping to break their confidence 
trying to convince them that God was not for them. He was trying to convince them that God had turned against them and that they were not to listen to Hezekiah as God was not a good defender. And the ultimate threat, the ultimate thing no, was when the Rabsheke said that God was not able to defend them as the gods of the other cities, you see, they had defeated their gods and their gods weren't able to, to, to stop them. And the record was there to show and if the other gods could not have stopped them when they fought them then, how could their God, how could Hezekiah's God, the almighty God, this God of Jerusalem, defend them? How could he even save them? You see, they were putting their trust in chariots, in horses, in their victories that they had already won, not realizing that they were coming up against the true and living God. And when brother Hezekiah heard this, after his men returned to him now in sackcloth and ashes because the poor man couldn't believe that this man, the Rabsheke, was so bold and out of order against the true and living God. So when they returned to King Hezekiah in sackcloth and ashes with their hand upon them head, Hezekiah, he too wept put on sackcloth and ashes and went into the house of the Lord. He went into the temple of the Lord and he called together now his inner circle to get advice. He called Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary, and the leading priests. Called them up and then he sent them to the prophet Isaiah to inquire further of the Lord and the word of the Lord came forth a word of reassurance that says thou shall thus shall you say to your master thus saith the Lord do not be afraid of the words you have heard yeah man some of we get some threat we hear some word and we just haul up and pull up in our shell. But the word of the Lord came to King Hezekiah that do not be afraid of the words you have heard with which the servants, the servants of King Assyria have blasphemed me. Surely I will send a spirit upon him and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Isaiah 37 verses 6 and 7 of the text. That is what it says. And here the Lord God assures Hezekiah that he will indeed deal with the Rabshakeh case. He will not deal with him case. Yeah. He has heard his blasphemy. And he will bring judgment against him. You know. He sent that word to Hezekiah said, Easy yourself, man. I've got this. God has this. And then we see now in Isaiah 37 verses 8 to 13 that says, When the field commander or the Rabsheke heard that the king of Assyria had left Lachish, he withdrew and found the king fighting against Libna. Now, Senaritrib received a report that Terhaka, the Kushai king of Egypt, was marching out to fight against him. When he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah with this word. Say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let the God you depend on deceive you when he says Jerusalem will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. Surely you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the countries, destroying them completely. And will you be delivered? Did the gods of the nations that were destroyed by my forefathers deliver them? The gods of Gosan, Haran, Rezpa, 
and the people of Eden who were in Tel Azar? Where is the king of Hamath, the king of Arpad, the king of the city of Seharphim, or of Hena, or Iva? Hmm? That was, was, was another um, threat, you would say, a boast that was sent to Hezekiah. Now, where this word was sent now, this must have seemed to Hezekiah to be the fulfillment of the Lord's promise through the prophet Isaiah. The Rabsheke had indeed left Jerusalem. And Hezekiah must have thought, yes, now he will go back to his own land and be killed. Just like the Lord promised. Good riddance. Thank you, Lord. He must have said. So while the field commander or the Rabshakeh was away, the Assyrians now learned that the Egyptian troops were advancing from the south. And this would be the Egyptian intervention Assyria feared. And that many in Judah now trusted in. But Isaiah had prophesied a long time, said, no worry yourself, it now come to nothing. It will amount to nothing. Now, Rabsheke, or the, the field commander, remember now, he is not in Jerusalem. But that didn't stop him from trying to build fear, discouragement and despair in King Hezekiah, even from a distance. Yes, that's how persistent the enemy is, even from a distance. You may not get no uh, 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 a threat in words, but you get it in another form. So here what happened now, the Rabshakeh with him bright self, he sent a letter to the king of Judah, hoping to defeat him even from a distance, hoping to drive fear into Hezekiah and the people, saying, do not trust in God. Do not let him deceive you like God is like man that in can lie. And to try now and prove his point, he reeled off in the letter how and where the kings of Assyria had defeated the gods of other lands, classing God, in other words, among other gods, gods made of wood, not realizing that God is the supreme one, the alpha, the omega, the I am that I am. Yes, the first and the last, the one true and living God. And in fact, what the Rabsheke did was blaspheme the Lord and invited judgment. So in Isaiah 37 from verses 16 to 20 is where we see Hezekiah's prayer after him get this letter. So when brother Hezekiah got this letter, it was simply too much. As it was especially scary you now because their army is surrounding Jerusalem and it seems they have already taken all the major cities of Judah. So brother Hezekiah, he ran into the temple again. I love Hezekiah. Him just run up into the Lord when problem take him. So he ran into the temple of the Lord again. And this letter that he got from the Rabsheke from a distance, he came into the temple of the Lord and him spread it out. He spread it out in the temple of the Lord. He spread it out in the presence of the Lord. And he prayed. Hezekiah's response shows that he not only believed in God, but that he trusted him and he had faith in him. Hezekiah did exactly what any child of God should do with such a letter. Yes, man, what do you do when you get a threat? Do you just run and ball and put your hand on your head and say you're dead now? Huh? Uh-uh. He took it to the house 
of the Lord and he spread it out before the Lord in faith. In this, Hezekiah boldly and effectively fulfilled the later command found in 1 Peter 5, 7 that says that we are to cast all our care upon him. We are to cast all our care upon the Lord. Yes, mm -hmm. as he cares for us. And as Hezekiah spread out this written threat before the Lord, while brother Hezekiah was in the temple, Isaiah got a word from the Lord for him while Hezekiah was still in the temple praying. And, and Isaiah sent a messenger to Hezekiah in the temple with the word of hope. Stay on your knees. As you stay on your knees, the word will come because before you call out, the answer is already on the way. So, Brother Hezekiah got a word of encouragement, a word of hope from Brother Isaiah that justice was on the way. Judgment was around the corner. So fear not. God further reassured Hezekiah in regards to the king of Assyria that, and I, I quote what he says, he shall not come into the city nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor build a sage mount against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return. I've got this attack, you know. And he shall not come into this city, says the Lord, for I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant. David's sake. Hallelujah. This was what God said at the, the, the latter part of the text. After God don't lay out in position who he is, that he's God and that he's Lord. Yeah, that him bigger than this, this, this king of Assyria. So God said he had already determined what would take place. That's what he said in, in verse 36 of the text, Isaiah 37. God had already determined what would take place. He planned his actions long ago and he would accomplish his plan. Assyria, yeah, would have a few victories, but ultimately he would thwart them. King Sennacherib and his army won't even enter Jerusalem again. And then the scripture goes on to tell us that then an angel of the Lord shows up. That's at the very end part now of the, of the text. Yeah. That an angel, verse 36. Yes. That an angel of the Lord shows up now and kill 185,000 Assyrians in one night. Boop. Just like that by the hand of the Lord. And later on, the Bible says, one day, when King Sennacherib was at home worshipping his God, common G-O-D, worshipping his idol, his sons, he own a picnic them, shows up and kills him with a sword, just as God had promised. You see, friends, whatever God says, he means God does not slack off on his promises. God not go back for any word. Hezekiah, my brothers and sisters, was a man of much prayer. And he persisted in prayer and faith, even though he could not see the answers coming. And this is saying to us that when we pray, we must have faith that God has already prepared the best answer for our situation. Our task is to ask in faith and wait in humility. God will never fail us. He is our shield and he is a strong defender. He is a sure defender. He is reliable and he is Jehovah Gibor. He is a warrior. 
and he backs down from no battle as none, none, not one, takes him by surprise. We have to realize, friends, that the war is already won and we must turn all our battles over to the Lord as it's not by might nor by power that we win. But we must allow the spirit of the Lord to run things. Let us adapt the attitude of brother Hezekiah. We're at the sign and sight of trouble. Our first response should be to run to him. Run to the Lord and spread it out. Lay out our concerns. Pour it out on him. him. Him a big, him back broad man, he can take it. Pour out all our concerns to him and watch him run to our rescue in Jesus' name. Now to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God, our defender. God, our shield bearer, God, our battle warrior. We thank you for being who you are, the I am that I am, the one who fights our battles for us. The one, if we just call out to him, he will run to us, he will rescue us. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Lord, we pray now in the name of Jesus that as your word has gone forth, we pray that it becomes a word of reassurance, a reminder that you are able to fight our battles. You are able to do the exceedingly, abundantly, far more than we can possibly think or imagine thing if we but call out to you, O oh God, and you will run to us. So mighty God, glorify yourself in each and every heart in each and every thought, and for those who might be going through a situation right now, who would have received a threat, I pray in the name of Jesus that this becomes a reminder that God is able, that God is still a defender, and he is able to fight our battles successfully for us. Let us place all our trust in him. Father, Strengthen that one right now in the name of Jesus. Remind them that you are on the case, that you are able. Nothing, absolutely nothing is too difficult for you. So Father, glorify yourself now in each and every one of us as we say thank you in advance for what you shall do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. And we thank you for strength. So we lift you, God. We bless your holy name. You're amazing, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. You are my Declare it all over the room. Strength, Strength line, oh. 